the most infamous assassin in the galaxy, just made a fatal mistake. He refused a direct order from the fearsome King Zorix. In the opulent throne room of the Zanari Royal Palace, the hardened killer, Xanth, stands defiantly before the seething monarch. Renowned across the galaxy for his merciless efficiency, Xanth has built a bloody career on eliminating high-profile targets without hesitation or remorse. But when King Zorix demands that Xanth infiltrate Earth and assassinate Justin Webb, a billionaire human industrialist, the battle-scarred hitman does the unthinkable. He rejects the contract with a scornful shake of his head. Audible gasps echo through the cavernous chamber. Xanth has never refused an assignment in his life. Enraged, Zorix surges to his feet, fists clenched. He bellows for an explanation, but Xanth stands mute, eyes blazing with defiance. The assassin's mind flashes back to a fateful mission on Earth years ago, an encounter with a human target that shattered his ruthless worldview and set him on a secret path to redemption, a debt he swore to repay, even at the cost of his own life. But the Zanari king cares nothing for Xanth's mysterious past or attack of conscience. He sees only an ungrateful subordinate who has outlived his usefulness. With a imperious wave, Zorix summons his top enforcer, General Craxus, a brutal warrior as pitiless as he is loyal. Zorix orders Craxus to beat Xanth into submission and force him to accept the contract on Justin Webb's head. A slow, cruel smile spreads across the general's craggy face. As Xanth storms from the palace, Craxus gathers an elite kill team to run the rogue assassin to ground, and Xanth knows his time is running out. Justin Webb's clandestine negotiations with Zanari rebels threaten to topple Zorix's rotting regime and ignite a civil war that will reshape the galactic balance of power. Xanth must uncover the mysteries of his past and confront the demons that haunt him. The fate of Earth, the Zanari, and the entire Orion arm hangs in the balance. One thing is certain. The galaxy will run red with blood before this is over. As Xanth's mind reels from the vivid flashback, he paces the confines of his hidden safe house, his armor-clad footsteps echoing off the bare metal walls. The memory of Marco Russo's gentle smile and the child's innocent offering haunts him, a stark contrast to the brutal existence he has led for so long. Xanth's eyes dart to the array of weapons and gadgets strewn across the workbench, tools of his deadly trade. For the first time, they bring him no comfort or sense of purpose. Instead, he feels a gnawing emptiness, a yearning for something more than the next kill, the next contract. A sudden beep from his comlink snaps Xanth back to the present. He taps the device and a holographic image of General Craxus flickers to life. The enforcer's scarred visage twisted with hardly restrained rage. Xanth, you traitorous dog, Craxus snarls, his voice dripping with venom. Did you really think you could defy the king and walk away unscathed? Xanth remains silent, his expression impassive even as his mind races with possibilities. I'm coming for you. Craxus continues, his eyes narrowing to slits. And when I find you, I'll make you beg for the mercy of a swift death. The hologram winks out, leaving Xanth alone once more with his turbulent thoughts. He knows that Craxus is a formidable foe, a relentless hunter who will stop at nothing to bring him to heal. But something has changed within Xanth, a flicker of empathy that refuses to be extinguished. He glances at the star map displayed on the safe house's main screen, tracing the complex web of hyperspace routes that crisscross the galaxy. Somewhere out there, Justin Webb is working to build a better future, one free from the tyranny and oppression that have defined Xanth's existence for so long. Xanth's gaze hardens with newfound commitment. He cannot run from his past or from the consequences of his actions, but perhaps for the first time in his life, he can fight for something more than mere survival or the thrill of the kill. With a few deft keystrokes, Xanth wipes the safe house's data banks and gathers his essential gear. He knows that confronting Craxus and the Zanari King will likely be a one-way trip, a mission with no extraction plan. But as he strides towards the exit, his plasma rifle slung over one shoulder, Xanth feels a strange sense of liberation. He has spent his life as a tool of death and destruction, but now he has a chance to forge a new path to become something more than just another cog in the machine of galactic violence. And as he steps out into the neon-lit streets of the Zanari capital, 
Xanth knows that whatever happens next, he will face it on his own terms, as a man reborn. Xanth slips through the neon-drenched alleyways of the Zanari capital's seedy underbelly, his senses on high alert for any sign of General Craxus and his relentless hunters. The air hangs thick with the acrid stench of cheap liquor and desperation as he ducks into a seedy bar, hoping to blend in with the motley assortment of lowlifes and outcasts. Through the haze of smoke, Xanth spots a striking female Zanari watching him from a shadowed booth. Her eyes, a piercing amber, seem to bore into his very soul. Intrigued and wary, he makes his way over to her table. You're the assassin who defied the king, she says, her voice a husky purr. I'm Zara, and I think we can help each other. Xanth's hand instinctively drifts towards his concealed blaster. I work alone, he growls. Zara leans forward, undeterred. Not anymore. You see, I'm part of the Shadow Blades. We're going to overthrow Zorix and his rotten monarchy. End the assassinations, the oppression, and your little act of rebellion? It's just the spark we need. Xanth scoffs, but he can't deny the flicker of interest her words ignite. A chance to atone, to be more than death's harbinger. My knowledge of the royal palace, he muses aloud. You need it. Zara's smile is a slash of crimson. Bingo. Help us infiltrate, and we'll take care of the rest. No more running. Images flash through Xanth's mind. Marco's kindness, the weight of countless kills, the yawning emptiness in his soul. In that moment, he makes a decision. I'm in, he says, meeting Zara's gaze. But no innocents die. That's my line. Zara nods, a flicker of respect in her eyes. Deal. Now let's get planning. Craxus won't be far behind. As they slip out into the neon-soaked night, Xanth can't shake the feeling that his long-ago encounter on Earth has somehow led him to this moment, a chance at redemption, at forging a new path. But the road ahead is fraught with peril. General Craxus closes in, relentless and vengeful, and the heist that could change everything looms on the horizon, a daring gambit with the fate of worlds in the balance. Xanth steals himself, knowing that the hardest battles are still to come. But for the first time in his blood-soaked existence, he dares to hope, to dream of a future where humans and Zanari might coexist in peace, their shared destiny intertwined. And as he melts into the shadows alongside Zara, Xanth vows to do whatever it takes to make that dream a reality, despite the toll. The rebels' footsteps echoed through the palace's service corridors as Xanth led them towards their target. Kalia's fingers danced across her hollow interface, bypassing security protocols with practiced ease. Garok hefted his massive plasma cannon, eyes scanning for threats, while Rendak kept the team moving with quiet efficiency. We're approaching the throne room antechamber, Xanth whispered, his enhanced senses on high alert. Be ready for anything. As they rounded the final corner, a hail of energy bolts erupted from the shadows. General Craxus and his royal guards had sprung their trap. Take cover, Zara shouted, diving behind a nearby pillar. Garok unleashed a barrage from his cannon, the air crackling with superheated plasma. The palace walls shuddered under the assault as both sides exchanged fire. Xanth picked off guards with surgical precision, but Craxus's elite warriors pressed their advantage. Just as the rebels seemed overwhelmed, Craxus's voice cut through the chaos. Hold your fire! An uneasy silence fell. Craxus stepped forward, his scarred face a mask of conflicting emotions. Xanth, it's time we talked. Xanth emerged from cover, plasma rifle at the ready. Talk fast, Craxus. The contract on Justin Webb, Craxus said, his voice low. It came directly from King Zorix. A ripple of shock passed through the rebels. Xanth's eyes narrowed. Why? Webb's been negotiating alliances with other systems, Craxus explained. Zorix fears losing his grip on power. The pieces clicked into place for Xanth. The corruption, the lies. It all led back to Zorix's desperation to maintain his tyrannical rule. Zara saw their opening. We can expose this to the Zanari people. End Zorix's reign once and for all. Craxus hesitated. Years of loyalty warring with his sense of honor. Finally, he nodded. I'll stand down my forces. But after this, I'm gone. 
Zorix won't show mercy to any of us. With Craxus's defectors bolstering their ranks, the rebels surged towards the throne room. The doors exploded inward as Garok's cannon tore through the final barrier. Inside, Zorix's personal guard formed a protective ring around the monarch. The king's eyes blazed with fury as he saw Xanth among the attackers. Traitors, Zorix bellowed. I'll see you all executed for this. Zara stepped forward, her voice ringing out. People of Xenar, your king has betrayed you, ordering assassinations to protect his own power? As if on cue, a familiar figure flickered to life. Justin Webb's hologram, projected from Kalia's device. Zorix's time is over, Webb declared. We stand ready to forge a new alliance, human, Xenari, and others, an end to violence and subjugation. Xanth found himself at the eye of the storm, blaster trained on Zorix. All his years as a killer, the weight of his past had led to this moment. He could end it all with a single shot. But as he gazed into Zorix's hate-filled eyes, Xanth saw only an echo of his former self, a being consumed by violence, fear, and the lust for power. Xanth lowered his weapon. No more killing, he said, loud enough for all to hear. We end this cycle, here and now. The throne room erupted in chaos as nobles argued and guards wavered. Zorix, seeing his support crumbling, lunged for a hidden control panel. Alarms blared throughout the palace. You've doomed us all, the king screamed. If I fall, the entire Zanari Empire burns with me. Xanth turned to Zara, persistence etched on his face. We need to shut down whatever he's activated. Fast. As rebels and loyalists clashed around them, Xanth and the core team raced deeper into the palace. The fate of worlds hung in the balance, with Zorix's finger on the trigger of unimaginable destruction. Destruction. The palace's emergency systems wailed as Xanth and his team raced through twisting corridors, searching for the source of Zorix's doomsday trigger. There, Zara pointed to a heavily fortified door, the Royal Command Center. Garok unleashed a barrage from his plasma cannon, the reinforced metal buckling under the assault. As the smoke cleared, Xanth burst through the opening, his keen senses scanning for threats. Inside, a group of high-ranking Zanari nobles huddled around banks of flickering hollow screens. Their eyes widened in shock at the intruders. Stand down, Xanth commanded, his weapon trained on the closest official. We're here to stop Zorik's madness. A silver-haired Zanari stepped forward, her ornate robes marking her as a member of the ruling council. Assassin? she hissed. You dare betray your king? Xanth's mind raced. These weren't mere lackeys. They were the true power behind Zorix's throne. He lowered his weapon, taking a calculated risk. Your king betrayed you first, he said, voice steady. The assassination contract on Justin Webb? It came directly from Zorix. A ripple of shock passed through the assembled nobles. Xanth pressed on, revealing the depths of Zorix's paranoia and the extent of his plot to maintain power at any cost. The silver-haired counselor's eyes narrowed. Prove it. Zara stepped forward, activating a hollow projector. Images flickered to life. Classified documents, recorded conversations. A web of corruption laid bare. By the void, another noble whispered. He would doom us all. Xanth saw the moment their loyalty shattered. Help us stop this, he urged. There's still time to forge a new path. The counselor nodded grimly. What do you need? With the noble's aid, they swiftly located and disabled Zorix's failsafe systems. As alarms fell silent across the palace, Xanth's comm link crackled to life. Xanth! It was Craxus, his voice strained. We've secured the throne room, but Zorix is rallying his personal guard for a final stand. We're on our way, Xanth replied, turning to the others. Let's finish this. They sprinted back towards the heart of the palace, the converted nobles in tow. The sounds of battle grew louder with each step. As they burst into the massive throne room, Xanth took in the scene in an instant. Rebels and defectors clashed with the remnants of the royal guard. At the center of the chaos stood Zorix, his eyes blazing with fury as he bellowed orders to his dwindling forces. Xanth moved with deadly precision, years of training taking over. He ducked and weaved through the melee, 
incapacitating Zorix's elite bodyguards with ruthless efficiency. Each strike brought him closer to the Tyrant King. Zorix's eyes locked onto Xanth, recognition and hatred twisting his features. Traitor! He snarled, drawing an ornate energy blade. Their duel was swift and brutal. Zorix fought with the desperation of a cornered animal, but Xanth's skills had been honed through countless missions. With a final decisive move, he disarmed the king and forced him to his knees. The fighting around them stuttered to a halt as all eyes turned to the unfolding drama. Xanth stood over Zorix, blaster trained on the fallen monarch. It's over, Xanth declared, his voice carrying across the stunned silence. Zorix sneered, defiant to the last. Fool, the Zanari Empire will never bow to... His words were cut short as the silver-haired counselor stepped forward. No, Zorix, you no longer speak for us. One by one, the captured nobles denounced the king, stripping away the last vestiges of his authority. Zorix's face contorted in impotent rage as he realized the full extent of his defeat. Xanth's mind raced, considering their next move. The Zanari stood at a crossroads, and he knew that the actions taken in these crucial moments would shape the future of their civilization. He turned to Zara, an idea forming. We need to contact Justin Webb, he said. It's time to build the bridge between our peoples. Zara nodded, understanding the weight of the moment. As she worked to establish a secure channel, Xanth kept his weapon trained on Zorix. The fallen king glared at him, hatred burning in his eyes. You've doomed us all, Zorix spat. Xanth met his gaze steadily. No, he replied. I've given us a chance at something better. The throne room's main hollow projector flickered to life, and a familiar face materialized before them. Justin Webb, the human billionaire whose life Xanth had once been tasked to end, now stood as a symbol of hope for a new era. Webb's eyes widened as he took in the scene before him. What's happening? he asked, his voice taut with concern. Xanth stepped forward, still keeping Zorix covered. Mr. Webb, he said, my name is Xanth, and I believe it's time we talked about the future of our civilizations. Xanth took a deep breath, his gaze shifting between the fallen Zorix and the holographic image of Justin Webb. Mr. Webb, you're looking at the aftermath of a revolution. King Zorix has been deposed, and the Zanari people stand ready for a new era of leadership. Webb's eyes widened, his voice filled with cautious optimism. This is unprecedented. What happens now? Now, Xanth said, his voice steady, we build a bridge between our civilizations. In the days that followed, Xanth found himself thrust into a role he never imagined diplomat. As the dust settled and a new government took shape, Justin Webb extended an unexpected offer. Zanari ambassador to Earth. Xanth's initial instinct was to refuse. He was an assassin, not a peacemaker. But as he looked at the faces around him, Zara, Rendak, even the converted nobles, he saw a glimmer of hope he couldn't ignore. I accept, he said, the words feeling foreign on his tongue. Weeks later, Xanth stood beside Webb on the landing pad of a gleaming Earth spaceport. The ambassador's sleek black uniform felt constricting compared to his usual combat gear. As he took his first steps onto human soil, his enhanced senses were overwhelmed by the cacophony of sights, sounds, and smells. Welcome to New York, Webb said with a smile. The streets teemed with a dizzying array of humans from every walk of life. Xanth's gaze darted from person to person old habits dying hard as he assessed potential threats. But there were no threats here, only curious onlookers and flashing cameras. At a press conference later that day, Xanth found himself facing a barrage of questions from human journalists. Their probing inquiries about Zanari culture and intentions left him struggling to find diplomatic responses. Ambassador Xanth, one reporter called out, how do you envision the future relationship between humans and Zanari? Xanth paused, choosing his words carefully. We stand at the threshold of a new era. The Zanari people are eager to learn from humanity, to forge bonds of mutual understanding and cooperation. As the days passed, Xanth's clinical view of Earth began to crumble. He attended meetings where humans passionately debated concepts like individual rights and environmental protection. 
He witnessed elections where power changed hands peacefully, a stark contrast to the bloody coup he'd just participated in. One afternoon, Webb took him to a local park. Children laughed and played while their parents chatted nearby. The scene was so alien to Xanth that he found himself frozen in place. This is what we're fighting for, Webb said softly. A future where our children can grow up without fear. Xanth nodded, unable to find words to express the conflicting emotions roiling within him. Later that week, Xanth received an unexpected visitor at the Zanari Embassy, Marco Russo. The man he'd been sent to kill years ago now stood before him, a warm smile on his face. I hoped I'd get the chance to see you again, Marco said, extending his hand. Xanth shook it hesitantly, still marveling at the human's capacity for forgiveness. As they talked, Marco spoke of his work as a teacher in underprivileged neighborhoods, his eyes shining with passion as he described helping children reach their full potential. Why? Xanth asked, genuinely curious. Why dedicate your life to others like this? Marco's answer was simple. Because every life has value, and sometimes all it takes is one act of kindness to change someone's entire world. The words struck Xanth like a physical blow. He thought of that night years ago when Marco's compassion had planted the first seed of doubt in his mind. As negotiations for the human Zanari Treaty progressed, Xanth found himself increasingly drawn to human customs and social structures. The idea of open borders and civilian exchange both thrilled and terrified him. How would his people adapt to such radical changes? His concerns were justified. Upon returning to the Zanari homeworld to brief the new government, Xanth faced immediate backlash. A vocal faction of hardliners accused him of being corrupted by human ideals. You would have us throw open our doors to potential conquerors? One council member sneered. Xanth stood his ground, drawing on the diplomatic skills he'd honed on Earth. I would have us embrace new possibilities. The humans have much to teach us about cooperation, innovation, and compassion. As the debate raged, Xanth felt a hand slip into his. He turned to see Zara standing beside him, her eyes blazing with dedication. You're not alone in this fight, she said softly. Xanth squeezed her hand, a new warmth spreading through his chest. Another human concept he was slowly learning to embrace. Love. With Zara and Rendak's support, Xanth launched a series of public addresses, laying out his vision for a new Zanari society. He spoke of the marvels he'd witnessed on Earth, painting a picture of a future where their two peoples could thrive together. Slowly but surely, the tide of public opinion began to turn. The hardliners found their support dwindling as more and more Zanari embraced the promise of change. As the first human diplomats prepared to set foot on Zanari soil, Xanth stood at the spaceport, a mix of anticipation and apprehension coursing through him. The path ahead was uncertain, filled with challenges he couldn't yet imagine. But as he watched the shuttle descend from the crimson sky, Xanth allowed himself a moment of hope. The assassin who once saw only targets now saw potential allies. The cold logic of his training had been tempered by the warmth of human compassion. Whatever the future held, Xanth knew one thing for certain. He would face it not with a weapon in his hand, but with an open mind and an open heart. The first cracks in the fragile human Zanari alliance appeared mere weeks after the historic treaty signing. Xanth stood before a sea of angry faces, his newly honed diplomatic skills put to the ultimate test. Traitor! The shout rang out from the crowd gathered outside the Zanari capital building. You've sold us out to the humans! Xanth raised his hands, trying to project calm. Please, listen. This alliance offers us unprecedented opportunities for... His words were drowned out by a fresh wave of jeers. At the edge of the crowd, he spotted a familiar face. General Mazak, his eyes gleaming with satisfaction as he watched the chaos unfold. Later that evening, Xanth's communication device chirped urgently. Ambassador Webb's holographic form flickered into view, his expression grim. We've got a situation, Webb said without preamble. Extremists have seized control of the Helios 7 research station. They're holding the human scientists hostage. Xanth's mind raced. What are their demands? The usual. Dissolution of the Alliance. Immediate withdrawal of all human presence from Zanari space. 
I'll handle it, Xanth said, already formulating a plan. Webb shook his head. Not alone. I'm coming with you. As they prepared for the operation, Xanth found himself haunted by memories of his assassin past. The weight of the non-lethal stun weapon at his hip felt wrong, a constant reminder of how much had changed. Their shuttle approached the research station, a gleaming structure suspended in the inky void of space. As they neared the airlock, Xanth turned to Webb. There's someone else we need, he said, Marco Russo. Webb's eyebrows shot up. The teacher? Why? Trust me, Xanth replied, thinking back to that fateful night years ago. He has a way with people. Hours later, their unlikely trio stood before the sealed doors of the station's main control room. The muffled sounds of arguing voices filtered through. Marco stepped forward, his calm demeanor a stark contrast to the tension crackling through the air. He keyed the intercom. This is Marco Russo, he said, his voice steady. I'm here to listen. Silence fell, then a gruff voice responded. Why should we trust you, human? Because I understand what it's like to feel powerless, Marco answered. To want to fight against a system that seems rigged against you. More silence, then the sound of locks disengaging. The door slid open, revealing a group of armed Zanari, their weapons trained on the newcomers. What followed was a grueling negotiation. Marco listened patiently as the extremists voiced their grievances, never judging, always seeking common ground. Xanth watched in awe as the human's genuine empathy slowly but surely diffused the hostility in the room. A commotion outside broke the fragile peace. General Mazak burst in, flanked by his own troops. Enough of this farce, Mazak bellowed, raising his weapon. Death to the human sympathizers! Time seemed to slow. Xanth saw Mazak's finger tighten on the trigger, saw Marco's eyes widen in shock. Without thinking, he threw himself between them. The energy blast struck Xanth squarely in the chest, sending him sprawling. As consciousness faded, he heard shouts of alarm, not just from Webb and Marco, but from Mazak's own men. When Xanth awoke in the station's medical bay, he found Marco sitting by his bedside. You saved my life, Marco said softly. Xanth managed a weak smile. Consider us even. As he recovered, Xanth learned the full story. Mazak's assassination attempt had backfired spectacularly, turning even his own troops against him. The crisis had ended without further bloodshed, with the extremists surrendering peacefully. In the days that followed, as the Alliance worked to strengthen its position, Xanth found himself drawn more and more to Marco's teachings of compassion and understanding. The last vestiges of his cold assassin's mindset began to fade away. Not everyone saw this change as positive. One evening, Zara confronted him in the embassy's private quarters. You're going soft, Xanth, she said, her eyes hard. The Zanari people need strength, not this human sentimentality. Xanth met her gaze steadily. There's strength in compassion, Zara. I've seen it firsthand. She shook her head, turning away. I hope you're right, she murmured. For all our sakes. As Xanth prepared for his next address to the Zanari people, he knew the path ahead would be challenging. The alliance was still fragile the wounds of the past still fresh. But for the first time in his life, he felt truly certain of his purpose. The former assassin turned ambassador stood before the mirror, adjusting his formal robes. Today he would speak not of power or supremacy, but of hope, of a future where humans and Zanari could stand together as equals, learning from each other's strengths. It was a future worth fighting for, not with weapons, but with words and deeds of kindness. As Xanth stepped out to face the waiting crowds, he silently vowed to honor Marco's teachings, regardless of the cost. Xanth's voice echoed through the crowded assembly hall, his words painting a vision of human Zanari cooperation. As he concluded his speech, a commotion erupted near the back of the room. Security personnel rushed forward, surrounding a figure in a dark cloak. Zara? Xanth's eyes widened as the hood fell back revealing his former ally's face. Her features were twisted with anger and disgust. You've become weak, Xanth, a puppet for the humans. Before Xanth could respond, Zara vanished into the crowd. He moved to follow, but Webb's hand on his arm stopped him. We have bigger problems, 
Webb said, his voice tight. Reports are coming in of attacks on joint outposts across Zanari space. The next few days passed in a blur of emergency meetings and damage control. Xanth poured over reports of coordinated strikes against human facilities, his heart sinking as he recognized the tactical brilliance behind the assaults. It could only be one person. General Mazak, he muttered, staring at a holographic map of the affected areas. Webb nodded grimly. Intel suggests he's leading a resurgent xenophobic faction, and it looks like Zara's joined them. Xanth's fists clenched at his sides. We need to talk to her. Make her see reason. They arranged a clandestine meeting, Zara agreeing to hear them out. But as Xanth approached the rendezvous point, his enhanced senses screamed danger. He burst into the room just in time to see Mazak's troops dragging an unconscious Zara away. No! Xanth lunged forward, but a stun blast caught him in the chest, sending him sprawling. When he came to, Webb was helping him to his feet. They took her, Xanth gasped. Mazak has Zara. The implications hit him like a physical blow. Zara knew too much. Zanari military codes, alliance weaknesses, Earth's defenses. In Mazak's hands, that information could shatter everything they'd worked for. Xanth stood before the Zanari Council, outlining the dire situation. We must strike now, before Mazak can use Zara's knowledge against us. But fear had taken hold. Counselors argued against military action, terrified of permanently fracturing the alliance. Xanth left the chamber, his mind racing. There had to be another way. He found Marco Russo in the embassy gardens, tending to a patch of earth flowers, struggling to adapt to Zanari soil. I need your help, Xanth said without preamble. We're going to infiltrate Mazak's stronghold. Marco looked up, surprise etched on his face. Me? I'm just a teacher, Xanth. What can I do? Xanth's expression softened. You taught me the power of compassion, Marco. We'll need that where we're going. They formulated a plan. Xanth would pose as a returning defector, disillusioned with the Alliance. Marco would play the role of his human captive, proof of Xanth's loyalties. Their shuttle touched down on Kraval, a desolate moon of harsh winds and jagged rock formations. Mazak's fortress loomed before them, a monolithic structure of black metal and pulsing energy fields. As they were led inside, Xanth's gaze darted from corner to corner, mapping potential escape routes. They passed cell blocks filled with prisoners, both human and Zanari who had opposed Mazak's regime. A familiar scream echoed down the corridor. Xanth's blood ran cold as he recognized Zara's voice. He exchanged a glance with Marco, seeing his own grit mirrored in the human's eyes. They had found her. Now came the hard part. Part, their mission had only just begun. Years passed, and the human Zinari alliance grew stronger. Xanth, now officially known as Ambassador Zath, found himself settling into his role on Earth. The sprawling university campus bustled with activity as he made his way to Marco Russo's lecture hall. And that, students, is how the Zanari concept of honor debt differs from human social contracts, Marco concluded, his eyes lighting up as he spotted Zath entering the room. The class erupted in excited whispers. Zath's visits were always a highlight, bringing alien culture to life in ways no textbook could match. As the students filed out, Marco approached his old friend. Another successful cultural exchange, I'd say. Zath nodded, a hint of a smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Your teachings continue to bridge our worlds, Marco. Their comfortable routine shattered that evening. Alarms blared across the campus as explosions rocked nearby buildings. Zath's communicator crackled to life, flooding him with reports of simultaneous attacks on Zanari and human outposts. It's happening here, too, Marco said grimly, watching flames engulf the science complex. Zath's mind raced. This level of coordination, the precise targeting, it bore the hallmarks of Zanari military tactics. But who could have... His thoughts were cut short by a deafening blast. The lecture hall's roof caved in, and Zath's enhanced reflexes kicked in. He shoved Marco aside, barely avoiding a falling beam. Through the smoke and dust... Dark figures advanced. Come quietly, traitor, a gravelly voice commanded, or watch your precious humans die. 
Zath's eyes widened as he recognized the insignia on their armor. Vrath, one of Mazak's most fanatical lieutenants, long thought dead. Run! Zath shouted to Marco, but it was too late. A stun blast caught the professor mid-stride. Zath lunged for his friend, only to feel the sting of a neural disruptor at the base of his skull. As consciousness faded, he saw terrified human students being rounded up alongside him. Zath awoke to searing pain. His arms were stretched above his head, energy manacles biting into his wrists. The room was dark, save for a harsh light trained on his face. Welcome back, Ambassador. Vrath's sneering face swam into view. I hope you're comfortable. We have much to discuss. Zath remained silent, assessing his surroundings. The constant vibration beneath his feet suggested they were on a ship or station, likely far from Earth. Where are the students? Zath demanded. Vrath's lipless mouth curled into a cruel approximation of a smile. Safe, for now. Their fate depends entirely on your cooperation. What followed were hours of relentless interrogation. Vrath demanded access codes, defense plans, the locations of hidden human outposts. Zath's silence earned him only more pain. You disappoint me, Zath, Vrath hissed, activating another round of neural shocks. Have you forgotten what it means to be Zanari? These humans have made you weak. Zath's body spasmed, but he refused to cry out. As the pain subsided, he fixed Vrath with a determined eyes. You're wrong, he gasped. They've made us stronger. Vrath snarled, raising a hand to strike again. But a distant explosion rocked the facility, nearly throwing him off balance. Alarms began to blare. Impossible, Vrath muttered, checking a data readout. His eyes widened in disbelief. How did they find us? Zath allowed himself a small, pained smile. It seemed his faith in the Alliance hadn't been misplaced after all. The rescue had begun. The rescue operation was swift and precise. Alliance forces breached Vrath's hidden facility, overwhelming the xenophobic cultists with superior numbers and tactics. Zath felt a surge of pride as he saw humans and Zanari fighting side by side, their coordination flawless. As the energy manacles deactivated, Zath stumbled forward. A human soldier caught him, carefully supporting his weight. Easy there, Ambassador. We've got you. In the aftermath, Zath worked tirelessly to strengthen the bonds between their peoples. Months turned into years, and the scars of conflict slowly began to fade. The university campus became a shining beacon of interspecies cooperation, with Marco's cultural exchange program at its heart. On the fifth anniversary of the Alliance's founding, Zath stood before a mixed crowd of humans and Zanari. His voice rang out clear and strong. Today, we celebrate not just peace, but true understanding between our peoples. The applause was deafening. Zath's eyes found Marco in the crowd, the human professor beaming with pride. For a moment, Zath allowed himself to believe they had finally achieved lasting harmony. That illusion shattered three days later. Zath sat in a sterile briefing room, surrounded by grim-faced intelligence officers. The human liaison, Commander Reyes, spoke in a voice devoid of emotion. Ambassador, I regret to inform you that Marco Russo was killed yesterday in what appears to be a targeted assassination. The world seemed to tilt on its axis. Zath gripped the edge of the table, his voice barely a whisper. How? Reyes tapped a hollow screen, bringing up grainy security footage. A nanotech explosive, cleverly disguised as part of his office decor. Our preliminary investigation points to Zanari involvement. Zath's blood ran cold. He watched in horror as the recording showed Marco's last moments, the human's kind face frozen in an expression of shock before the blast claimed him. There's more, Reyes continued, her voice tightening. We've uncovered evidence of a far-reaching conspiracy. Zanari ultranationalists have infiltrated the highest levels of the Alliance, and they're not alone. There are human collaborators as well. Data streamed across the screens. Troop movements, encrypted communications, resource allocations, all pointed to a carefully orchestrated plan years in the making. Zath's mind raced. He thought of the trust Marco had placed in him in the promise of their shared future. He rose from his chair, eyes blazing with tenacity. 
I need a secure channel to our most trusted operatives. We have work to do. In the shadowy recesses of a long-abandoned Zanari outpost, Zath gathered his team. Kalia, the rebel operative whose network had proved invaluable. Garok, the grizzled warrior who had fought alongside Zath in countless battles. And Dr. Alara Vance, Marco's most brilliant student. Her eyes red-rimmed, but filled with fierce purpose. The situation is dire, Zath began, outlining what they knew of the conspiracy. We're dealing with extremists on both sides, working in tandem to destabilize the Alliance. Kalia's fingers danced over a holographic display, bringing up intercepted transmissions. My sources have detected unusual activity near the Epsilon Cluster. A human science outpost has gone dark. Garrock growled, his scarred face twisted in anger. A preemptive strike? Perhaps, Zath mused, or something worse. We need to investigate. Their stealth shuttle slipped through the void, evading patrols with ease. As they approached the outpost, floating silently in the inky blackness of space, Zath felt a growing sense of dread. Life signs detected, Alara reported, her voice tight. But something's not right. The bioscanners are picking up anomalous readings. Zath's eyes narrowed. Prepare for insertion. Whatever's happening in there, we need to stop it. The airlock cycled open, revealing dimly lit corridors. The team moved with practiced efficiency, weapons at the ready. They encountered no resistance, only an eerie silence broken by the hum of machinery. In the central laboratory, they found their answer. Rows upon rows of stasis pods lined the walls, each containing a writhing mass of silvery nanites. Alara gasped, her face pale as she scanned the nearest container. It's... it's a weapon, she whispered, designed to target human DNA. If released, it could wipe out our entire species. Zath's fists clenched. The true scope of the conspiracy began to take shape in his mind. This wasn't just about destabilizing the Alliance. It was genocide. Alarms blared, shattering the moment. Intruder alert and computerized voice announced. Lockdown protocols initiated. The team sprang into action, securing the lab's entrance. Zath's mind raced, formulating a plan. Ilara, gather all the data you can. We need to expose this before it's too late. As the sound of approaching footsteps echoed through the corridors, Zath readied himself for battle. The fight for the very soul of the Alliance had only just begun. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.